Hello and welcome to a GCSE explainer about erosion landforms at the coastline and this one's going to focus on headlands and bays and cliffs. Here you can see vertical structure next to the coastline. You can see people on there for scale at Beachy Head Cliffs in, um, in East Sussex in England and you can see uh, you've got the lighthouse here, there's been a rock fall here um, and it, this is a headland sticking out into, into the sea. Okay, so headlands are hard rocks which are left jutting out into the sea and they're often made up of, of cliffs and they're often found at the end of discordant coastlands. We'll have a look at what that is in a moment. There's Land's End, another headland you can see sticking out into the into the sea. Uh, you see rocks here that have fallen off, but obviously very tough resistant rocks that stick out into the sea. Whereas a bay, um, you can see bays there in a brilliant part of northern Spain, San Sebastián. Okay. And uh, they're generally uh, areas of weaker or softer rock, which has been worn away more than the headland. They normally contain a sandy beach because of um, wave refraction and the fact that they're lower energy environments. They allow sediment to be deposited. So we'll take a look at this. So um, we'll get a if we get a coastline like this, we might have uh, less resistant clays in the green with the resistant sandstone, the resistant chalk. Um, and the waves would attack that coastline and that wave attack um, would cause things like hydraulic power and hydraulic action where the waves pound into the cliffs and, and pound into cracks and so on, force air in there, cause little explosions, attrition and abrasion. Those would call the cliff line to retreat. Okay, the issue would be that the lesser uh, resistant rocks such as the clays would be eroded more and the more resistant rocks would be eroded less so the more resistant rocks will be left as headlands with stacks on it at the end sometimes um, and the less resistant rocks will be eroded into into the base so you can see those there during calm periods the sheltered bays allow deposition on the on the beaches okay you can see the beaches in there. As for the cliffs, we have um, different tide lines on the cliff. So we have mean tide line, which is the uh, the average position of the tide. Uh, but we also, you know, get low tide and we get high tide. In between those, um, we will get a wave cut notch eroded um, by hydraulic action, attrition, abrasion, and corrosion, um, where the waves continue to beat against the base of the cliff. The cliff face will be attacked along lines of weakness by um, by weathering processes like freeze thaw and salt crystallization. And what that means is, um, over time, that wave cut notch will get bigger and bigger, and the cliff face would collapse, um, and that that material will be reworked by the sea, moved about, and washed away, um, and ground down into smaller pieces, and that would leave the cliff retreating inland. Um, and a, a wave cut platform, a flat area of rock um, that will be inundated at high tide. Um, there's just sort of a 3D view of both of those processes there. Okay, so in terms of tasks, you can label up these diagrams to show what's going on with bays and headlands on those discordant coastlines. And then explain what's going on in both sets of diagrams to give the bays and the and the headlands as well. Similarly on the cliff diagrams you can annotate those features onto the diagrams and then explain why cliffs retreat and there's a little sketching exercise there as well where you could sketch up the, the image of the cliffs there to show um, how they are created. Just finish up with a little a little dad joke what did the ocean say to the shore nothing it just waved <laughs>